In macroeconomics, we talk a lot about the different categories of aggregate expenditure on a country's goods and services. And specifically, we say that Y, or aggregate expenditure, can be broken down into consumption plus investment plus government spending plus net exports. But we don't think a lot about why that actually makes sense and how it gets broken down, so let's do that here. As a starting point, it's helpful to remember that net exports is just the amount of exports in an economy or things that are produced domestically but sold to foreigners minus the amount of imports here labeled as IM or the amount of things that are purchased by domestic consumers but produced abroad. In general, there are four different categories in which a good can fall when it's bought and sold. The good can either be produced domestically or within the boundaries of an economy, or it can be produced what I'll call abroad, maybe not literally abroad, but outside of the boundaries of that economy. And the good can be purchased domestically or purchased within the boundaries of an economy, or it can be purchased by foreigners. And notice here, I didn't literally mean whether somebody was you know, a citizen of an economy or something like that. But when I say purchased by foreigners, I just mean purchased outside of the boundaries of the particular economy that we're looking at. This gives us four different buckets in which to put various goods and services. But remember, because this Y, this aggregate expenditure, also represents production or GDP, this Y is only supposed to represent things that are actually produced domestically. So we can think of this Y as comprising these two boxes here. So let's think about each of these categories of aggregate expenditure and where they fit on this diagram. The first is consumption, which just includes most things that households in an economy purchase. Really the main thing that would not count in that is if you're purchasing a newly constructed house, that counts as investment rather than consumption. But we can generally think of consumption as the stuff that domestic households buy. But I don't know about you, but if I look into where the stuff that I consume is produced, some of that's probably made in the U.S., but then some of that, at least partially, is made in other countries. And so my consumption, probably your consumption, and actually aggregate consumption is some combination of stuff produced domestically and produced abroad, but all of consumption is purchased domestically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put our C category, I'm going to kind of make it an oval here to say that it can fall in both of these categories here. Investment is stuff that usually businesses buy in order to make more stuff. And like I said earlier, also, you know, new residential construction counts as investment. But again, if we're thinking how businesses buy their stuff to make more stuff or their, you know, capital, roughly speaking, they can either get their machines that are produced in the U.S. or they can get machines that are produced elsewhere. So likewise, we can say that our investment category would span both the produced domestically and produced abroad buckets, but all of this investment, because we're talking about domestic investment, is in fact purchased domestically. G, or government purchases, are also similar in this way, in that technically speaking, a government can buy stuff that's either made within the confines of the economy or made in other countries. In practice, it's probably the case that not that much of what a government purchases, just sort of on principle, is produced abroad, but it's still completely possible. So we want to think about even government purchases spanning both the produced domestically box and the produced abroad box. Exports, by definition, are things that are produced domestically but purchased by people in other economies. So, you know, that one's pretty simple that we can just put exports solely in this box on the upper right here. Looking at what we have so far, it seems like we have a little bit of a problem because we want Y or the aggregate expenditure on an economy's goods and services to only count expenditure on things produced domestically, 
But then we have three of our categories bleeding over into this produced abroad part of our diagram. Luckily, that's exactly where imports come into play because imports by definition are things that are produced in other economies or produced abroad, but purchased domestically. And so we can think about imports as all being in this box here. And so when we subtract imports out of our aggregate expenditure equation, what we're really doing is applying a correction factor to make sure that we're only counting expenditure on things that are produced domestically. This means a couple of things. First, you can't just look at this formula and say, oh, I would increase GDP or aggregate expenditure if I just somehow managed to decrease imports. Because remember, we've shown here that imports are just a correction factor for other expenditure categories of GDP. So if you're decreasing imports, you're also implicitly decreasing part of CING. So it doesn't quite work that way. Second, in retrospect, it probably would have been somewhat more intuitive if we stated our aggregate expenditure equation as Y or aggregate expenditure is equal to C minus the imported part of C plus I minus the imported part of I plus G minus the imported part of G plus exports but for whatever reason, way back when, we decided not to do it that way. But you can always, for yourself, remember that that's really what's happening here, even though the different variables in this equation are grouped in a different way.